hello guys welcome back to my channel in this video i am going to deal with the ascending tracks what we are supposed to know in the ascending tracks are at least we have to know what is the meaning of the ascending tracks next we should know what are all the different ascending tracks like we should be able to enumerate or enlist the different ascending tracks then we should also know the course that is the pathway of this ascending tracks and where they are going to terminate and very important we should also know that uh, uh, what are all the different sensations which are carried by the different ascending tracts so this is what we are going to study in this particular video remember that ascending tracts can be asked as a long essay they can be also asked as a short note or they can be also asked as short answer so how the, how can they be asked as a short answer they can just ask you to enumerate the ascending tracts and uh, tell the sensations which are carried by the different ascending tracts so without wasting much time let's begin the video on ascending tracts so what are these ascending tracts these ascending tracts are nothing but these are a group of neurons which are going to carry the somatic sensations from different parts of the body to the brain usually all these tracts are going to pass through the spinal cord and then they are going to ascend up and they are ultimately going to reach to the somatosensory cortex so this is the list of the ascending tracts the first three are the major ascending tracts and I am going to discuss these three in detail in this video. The next four are the minor ascending tracts. These are the one, the names of which we are supposed to remember. So the first one is the dorsal column or it is also called as the dorsal column medial lemniscal system. The second one is the spinothalamic tract or it is also called as the anterolateral system. There are two spinothalamic tracts. One is called as a lateral spinothalamic tract and another one is called as the anterior spinothalamic tract. Both of them are going to carry different sensations. Then we have the spinocerebellar tract. In the spinocerebellar tract, again, we have two types. One is called as the ventral spinocerebellar tract. Another one is called as the dorsal spinocerebellar tract. Now, apart from these three major, we have four minor tracts also we have the spinotectal spino olivary spino reticular and spino vestibular so what we are supposed to do with these minor tracts we are just supposed to remember their name so let's start with the first tract that is called as the dorsal column or it is also called as the posterior column or it's also called as the dorsal column medial lemniscal system so first let's try and understand as to what are all the sensations which are carried by the dorsal column Dorsal column is going to carry the sensation of fine touch, tactile localization, tactile discrimination, vibration, proprioception and the type of proprioception is what is called as the conscious proprioception as well as stereognosis. Now remember a common dictum whenever we are discussing or describing the pathways of all these tracts, all these tracts are divided into order of neurons. There can be a first order, second order and three order and usually remember that all these tracts are having three order of neurons because these tracts are not continuous they are going to synapse at different levels now if a tract is having three order of neurons that means the tract is synapsing at two levels fine so let's begin the pathway for the dorsal column the dorsal column is going to begin from the receptors now these receptors are giving rise to the nerve fibers and these nerve fibers are now going to enter into what is called as the dorsal root of the spinal cord okay from in the dorsal root there are something which is called as the dorsal root ganglion so what is this dorsal root ganglion the dorsal root ganglion is nothing but this is an amalgamation of all the cell bodies of these neurons so the axons which are arising from this dorsal root ganglion now they are going to enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord so this part of the spinal cord is the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord now once these fibers are going to enter into the dorsal gray horn they are going to go into this area of the spinal cord this area is what is called as the posterior white funiculus okay so remember these they it's it, these neurons have not yet synapsed anywhere so these neurons are called as the first order neurons one very interesting thing occurs in the posterior white funiculus that is the fibers which are arising from the lower limb that is the fibers which are carrying the sensation 
from the lower limb as well as from the lower part of the trunk they are represented in green and as here we are seeing in the diagram these are the fibers which are occupying more medial part of the posterior white funiculus and these fibers are called as gracile fasciculus whereas these red color fibers what you are seeing in the diagram these are the one which are carrying the sensation from the upper limb or from the upper part of the trunk okay so these are the fibers which are occupying this part that is the lateral part of the posterior white funiculus and these are called as the cuneate fasciculus so we are having two fibers one is called as the gracile fasciculus which is basically the nerve fibers carrying the sensation from the lower limb as well as the lower part of the trunk and we have the cuneate fasciculus which is carrying the sensation from the upper limb as well as from the upper part of the trunk so now both these fibers are going to ascend up and then they are going to reach to the level of the medulla and these are going to terminate in the two nuclei of the medulla what are these two nuclei called these are called as nucleus cuneatus and the nucleus gracilis so this is where our first order neurons are going to end now the second order neurons they are beginning from nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus of the medulla these fibers okay these are called as internal arcuate fibers these are what are called as internal arcuate fibers now these internal arcuate fibers they are going to cross over to the opposite side of the medulla in the same segment and then they are going to be called as medial lemniscus so before crossing over they are called as the internal arcuate fibers once they have crossed they are called as the medial lemniscus so these fibers of the medial lemniscus these are nothing but the second order neurons of this pathway they are going to terminate in the thalamus they are going to terminate in which nucleus of the thalamus they are going to terminate in ventero posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus so once they terminate there these are the third order of neurons which are going to begin from this vpl or the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and these are ultimately going to terminate in the post central gyrus or also called as area 3192 which is nothing but it represents our somatosensory cortex so this is how we are supposed to describe the entire pathway or the entire course and ultimately the termination of the dorsal column first order neuron second order neuron and the third order neuron most important thing to remember here is that the fibers are not decussating or they are not crossing over at the level of the spinal cord but the crossing over of the fibers is taking place at the level of the medulla oblongata second order neurons are arising from the nucleus cuneatus and the nucleus gracilis third order neurons are arising from the specific relay nuclei which is present in the thalamus next let's understand the spinothalamic tract there are two types of spinothalamic tracts one is called as the anterior spinothalamic tract and another one is called as the lateral spinothalamic tract the anterior spinothalamic tract carries the sensation of crude touch very important to remember whereas the lateral spinothalamic tract is going to carry the sensation of pain and temperature temperature means the feeling of both hot as well as cold fine so similarly here also we have to describe the spinothalamic tract under three order of neurons so the first order of neurons are going to begin from the nociceptors in the different parts of the body similarly they are going to enter into the dorsal root of the spinal cord in the dorsal root again we have the dorsal root ganglion as i told you what is this dorsal root ganglion this dorsal root ganglion is nothing but wherein we have the cell bodies of all these neurons so the axons arising from this dorsal root ganglion they are again going to enter into where they enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord and they are going to terminate there this is where the first order neurons are going to end now the second order neurons are going to begin from the 
dorsal grey horn of the spinal cord and now they are going to sweep across to the opposite side that is they are going to move towards the opposite side that means in the spinothalamic tract the crossing over of the fibers is taking place at the level of the spinal cord itself now once they move to the opposite half of the spinal cord or to the contralateral portion of the spinal cord few fibers are going to lie in the lateral white funiculus few fibers are going to lie in the anterior white funiculus the fibers which lie in the lateral white funiculus those fibers are called as the lateral spinothalamic tract and the fibers which are going to lie in the anterior white funiculus they are called as the anterior spinothalamic tract so both of them lying in the lateral as well as in the anterior now they are going to ascend up and this part of the tract is what is called as spinal lemniscus so the spinal lemniscus is going to ascend in the medulla it's going to ascend next in the pons as well as the midbrain and ultimately this is going to reach to the specific relay nuclei of the thalamus so these are the one which are going to form not the third order neurons but they are going to form the second order neurons so these are going to terminate in the specific relay nuclei of the thalamus most commonly it's the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus the third order neurons are, arise from it and again they are going to go to the somatosensory cortex which is area number 3192 sometimes these fibers are also called as the thalamocortical fibers so here also i have told you regarding the first order neurons where the first order neurons are terminating here they are terminating in the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord second order neurons arising from the dorsal horn of the spinal cord or sweeping across at the same level of the spinal cord and there few of them are going to lie in the lateral white funiculus few of them are going to lie in the anterior white funiculus and then these are going to ascend up these are called as the spinal lemniscus and ultimately the second order neurons are going to terminate in the specific relay nuclei of the thalamus third order neuron arises from the thalamus and it is going to ultimately terminate in the somatosensory cortex now coming to the last pathway which is called as the spinocerebellar tract spinocerebellar tract are going to receive the impulses from the muscle spindles from the golgi tendon organs as well as from the joint receptors so what sensation it is going to carry it is also going to carry the sensation of the proprioception but the proprioception here is called as the unconscious proprioception and the spinocerebellar tracts are also two types one is called as the dorsal spinocerebellar tract and the one is called as the ventral spinocerebellar tract so first let's trace the pathway for the dorsal spinocerebellar tract again it is going to begin from the receptor again it is going to enter into the dorsal root of the spinal cord again there is a dorsal root ganglion in which we have the cell bodies of these neurons when the axons arising from these cell bodies again is going to enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord and it's going to terminate there it is going to terminate in a nucleus which is present in the dorsal gray horn and that nucleus is called as the clark nucleus now here you can see this is the second order neuron okay which is arising from the clark nucleus and it now enters into this part of the spinal cord this is nothing but your lateral white funiculus okay now from here so this these fibers are going to stay on the same side from here the second order neurons are going to ascend up in the different levels of the spinal cord and ultimately they are going to reach to the medulla where they are going to pass via the inferior cerebellar peduncle and now they are going to terminate in an area of the cerebellum which is called as vermis it's not shown here in the diagram but they are going to somewhere terminate in the vermis now the third order neurons which are arising from the vermis they are going to reach the cerebellum to which lobes of the cerebellum they are going to reach they are going to reach the anterior lobe of the cerebellum as well as the posterior lobe of the cerebellum that means the dorsal spinocerebellar tract is ultimately going to terminate in the anterior as well as in the posterior cerebellar lobes now let's understand the ventral spinocerebellar tract again it is going to arise from the receptors again it has got the cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion again it is going to enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord and it is going to terminate that this is the first order neuron the second order neuron is again going to arise from the clark's nucleus but the difference here is that 
these fibers are going to sweep across to the opposite half of the spinal cord again they come and lie in the lateral white funiculus of the spinal cord again they are going to ascend up and they are going to enter via the superior cerebellar peduncle this is the difference so the dorsal spinocerebellar tract entered via the inferior cerebellar peduncle whereas the ventral spinocerebellar tract is going to enter via the superior cerebellar peduncle again it is going to terminate in the vermis so these are our second order neurons they are going to terminate in the vermis the third order neurons arising from the vermis are going to terminate in the anterior cerebellar lobe so this is regarding the uh, pathway termination as well as the sensations which are carried by the spino cerebellar tract so what all did we study in this video is we studied three major ascending tracts the dorsal column the spinothalamic tract and the spino cerebellar tract what did we study regarding this we studies what sensations do they carry okay we have studied their complete course as well as where are they going to termination where are they going to terminate and very importantly where is it that they are going to cross over at what level so the dorsal column is going to cross over at the level of the medulla oblongata the spinothalamic tracts are going to cross over at the level of the spinal cord the spinocerebellar tract the dorsal one is not going to cross whereas the ventral is again going to cross at the level of the spinal cord and we also know four more ascending tracts exist spinotectal spino olivary spino reticular and the spino vestibular so this is it regarding the ascending tracts if this video is helpful for you for your exams do like do share and subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching